Hello everyone and welcome to another EDB space program mission report and this time our contractors are aiming to put a Kerbal into orbit around the moon and return that Kerbal safely back to the Earth. Uh, this is the launch of the Alive Chicken by Colonel Sanders with my own launch script and um, it, it didn't go so well unfortunately uh, well into flight well into the first stage right on the first stage separation we discover that uh, it doesn't have enough avionics and unlike in the older version of KOS where a lack of avionics didn't change anything uh, actually the script would continue on without any problems in this new version of KOS it actually causes a problem as you can see total loss of control and really the KOS script couldn't regain control uh, the abort system wasn't quite properly configured and uh, we had lost one engine there that uh, really prevented any possibility of using that stage. And at this point, we just have to bring Jebediah back. And Jebediah will be consistently the Kerbal we try to get into orbit around the moon because Valentina completed the flyby contract. So all the stages off and just sort of floating around. And I double check the parachute to make sure it's all right. And... A successful splashdown at 6.2 meters per second. Recovering Jeb. Still keeping our Kerbals safe. Our next attempt to launch a Kerbal into orbit around the moon was from Coolany 14 of Cool Industries, the Lunar Orbiter Mark II on the Bluebird launcher. Both the payload and launcher being produced by Coolany Industries. This time we immediately had a launch script problem. I failed to check the orientation of the rocket on the launch pad. It was apparently rotated and the launch script was not aware that it was rotated in that particular way and so it, it started a roll maneuver to correct that and that roll just kept persisting. Uh, that, that didn't really cause us to deviate much from prograde until we lost an engine. The failure of one of the engines, however, definitely threw the control off as we were approaching max Q there. So uh, we lost an engine right at the wrong time when we passed the speed of sound and we're having maximum dynamic pressure and we were still rolling. And this is a very long rocket as well. And so the stress is all combined uh, to lead to, well, a very slow motion explosion. The the abort mechanism didn't exactly bring the capsule very far out, unfortunately. Uh, but the capsule was safe, and so we were able to proceed with, uh, with return operations. And so Jab was once again recovered safe and sound, so that he could be launched on yet another attempt to orbit the moon. For the next attempt, we did get a new Kerbal into the mix, Nancy Kerman, and Colonel Sanders of Kentucky Fried Construction managed to fix up his rocket, the Live Chicken, with the proper avionics. Unfortunately, because of construction time, time had passed, and so we had to launch in the dark, and for some reason, ambient light is totally not working, Planet Shine was not helping, we do not have launch pad lights for mysterious reasons. And to cap it all off, we lost one of the first stage engines, and you can see the horrible acceleration that we have to put up with. Um, the rocket did not deviate too much from prograde, at least it seemed to be headed in generally the right direction still, so we didn't abort yet. But it was quite a struggle, and the first stage certainly did not give us the boost we needed, or get us to the altitude we would have liked. Lots of drag and gravity losses along the way. But this is a Lunar Orbiter mission, so it has plenty of margin, and at least Nancy could be sent to orbit for the first time. Also, it would be a good shakedown of the spacecraft to see if there were any other issues that needed to be worked out. So it was worthwhile to do a low Earth orbit test, until one of the second stage engines cut out. And you can see we were already holding a very severe angle of attack in order to try and make orbit. Uh, it was a bare thing and the thrust on the stage wasn't really working for us and then losing an engine there basically made it impossible to uh, make orbit. So we had to abort, the abort mechanism still didn't work properly and so we had to go through normal staging to finally get to the point where Nancy Kerman could be recovered safely. 
Well, we've been through this this whole ordeal before. And here we are, there's uh, another stage floating by, and a service module, and Nancy's delighted, really. Uh, not, not reaching space this time, though. And because it's so dark, we can't really see the capsule there, Hi highlighted for you. And safe splashdown for Nancy Kerman. And so we try once again with Jeb on the Craft Miracle Orbiter from Shearstrut Industries launching on the Vesta rocket from Satellites R Us. The launch script was provided by Satellite 999 of Satellites R Us based on the launch script by Nadav FR. And here we see a definite wiggle to the rocket, a rather dangerous wiggle and unfortunate roll as well, though this time not because of a scripting error. But use of SES seems to have stabilized the situation, and then one engine goes out. Fortunately, there are nine engines on this rocket, so there's plenty of thrust to spare. And so we continue with Jeb. Everything looking okay through Max Q here. And approaching first stage separation. Still with just the one engine out, first stage separation, and four engines are lit. In this case, uh, four NK-9Vs, I believe. The NK-9V stage was not without its problems, and turning off or on SAS didn't seem to solve the problem. What did solve the problem was a much delayed separation of the launch escape system. After that was separated, it seemed to stabilize, which is interesting. The launch escape system didn't have any sort of controller on it. In any case, we continued to the end of the second stage with loss of performance on one of the engines, but only late in the going, so that it didn't affect us too much. And then proceed with a single engine third stage here to complete orbit. Everything was nominal for that one stage. And it did do its job with plenty of fuel to spare. This rocket is capable of launching far more than the Craft Miracle Orbiter. And this version of launch script doesn't have the, the edit on the achieved, unfortunately. But here we are. You can see two uh, RD-58 engines on our lunar transfer stage. And those ignited for translunar injection. Since we don't have cryogenic engines available to us just yet, these RD-58s are basically essential for our space program, especially our lunar missions. And here we go, they're very, very efficient kerosene oxygen engines that can relight, which is helpful. So, here we have some touch-ups to do on our approach, and rather than using the RCS on this stage, I will move on to the Astris engine on the service module here. And that will finish things up. Well, finally we have an approach to the moon after many, many launch attempts. Now we just need to make orbit and break orbit. So finally Jebediah Kerman is in luck. And here we are making orbit around the moon and you can actually see the stats for this spacecraft right now. Obviously not good enough to do anything more to make orbit right now. But we do have more advanced versions of the Craft Miracle Pod. And we just need to get within the requirements of the contract. And that should do it. We just need to return Jebediah Kerman home safely. So, here is the return burn, which is about the same delta V as the burn to get into orbit, by the way. About 800 meters per second to make orbit and 800 meters per second to break orbit again. We opted not to complicate this mission too much with additional science experiments. And so it was just uh, again to orbit and then come back sort of deal. And there we go, aiming for uh, Earth periapsis there. Now, uh, whenever I skip out, people uh, talk a lot about tilting the pod and, you know, use, uh, using descent mode rolls to 
uh, to try and adjust my direction. It is far, far better to just figure out the right periapsis to re-enter. Um, the actual attempts to roll the craft to change the trajectory aren't that effective in real life. It is mostly about hitting the right periapsis and the right trajectory going into the atmosphere, not trying to adjust once you're in the midst of the atmosphere. In this case, however, the EDB and its contractors, as we hear the sounds of the service module exploding, decided to not use descent mode and to instead go uh, flat against the atmosphere to, uh, as a sort of test to see what kind of g-forces we could expect and whether this was an acceptable periapsis in this case. The periapsis we had set here was 64 kilometers and we did end up uh, bouncing out of the atmosphere and having to go around but just barely. You can see the apoapsis we're still on our first pass through the atmosphere and the apoapsis is getting fairly low 200, 300 to 200 kilometers there and so we just went around without even correcting our periapsis, so on this pass we uh, had a negative periapsis. And so a rather severe re-entry from what was essentially low Earth orbit. So the G-forces were a bit high, though I think it was between 7 and 8 Gs that I maxed out at for Jebediah Kerman. And altogether uh, still quite safe, the ablation was hardly used. And here the, the flame effects are diminishing. And with Jeb on his way back safe and sound, I'll say thank you for watching this presentation of the missions of the EDB Space Program and its contractors. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.